Hello, my name is Logan Reynolds. Welcome back to my channel. I'm a freelance gaffer working in Portland and Seattle, and I'm available for hire. In this episode, I'm going to be comparing several different ellipsoidal lights and ellipsoidal attachments. Now, we did take some meter readings, but this is not an overly scientific review. We shut off the house lights in the shop, but we still had some daylight spilling into the space, leaning into real world conditions because that's the reality of how I'm using these lights. Wanted to control what I could within reason, but understand that there's going to be some level of variation between my tests and yours. That being said, here's what we tested. We had an Aperture Spotlight Max with 36 degree barrel. We combined that with other Aperture fixtures, a 1200D, 600X, 600D. We used an ETC 36 degree lens for the other ellipsoidals that we tested, which includes a Nanlux 900C, a 750 watt Leco, and a Joe Leco 800. I do want to make a point to say that we need to acknowledge what these lights are, what they're trying to be, and what they're not. We had some back and forth discussion on Gaffer Salon this week about the Joe Lico becoming obsolete. And while that might be true in some circumstances, we almost need to not look at the Spotlight Max with any combination of fixtures as a Joe Lico replacement. It seems like the new gen of ellipsoidals are aimed at optics and not output. So we kind of need to adjust our expectations on what we're doing with these lights and what we can get out of them. So we started our testing with the Aperture 1200D and Spotlight Max. The most obvious characteristic to note was the sharpness and evenness of the beam. The edges were incredibly sharp and there was no halation of any kind. In fact, I would give the award for sharpness to any of the Aperture lights we tested with the Spotlight Max. There are some downsides though. Um, you can have sharp blade cuts, you can have sharp gobos, but you cannot have sharp blades and gobos at the same time. Another con is that the blades don't rotate, and rather than get into details on why this is a huge bummer, John Roche already has a, a great video talking about that, uh, so check that out. Now let's get into the photometrics for the Spotlight Max. All these readings were taken at 20 feet. 1200D measured 120 foot candles. 600X measured 50 to 60 foot candles, depending where you were in the CCT range, and the 600D measured 90 foot candles. We'll say that as a base for our testing, I was pretty surprised by the punch out of the 600D, being that it was only one third less output than the 1200D, but also half the power draw. So that was a pretty nice surprise. Since we're talking about surprises, let's discuss the 900C. Now this is a full spectrum 900 watt light. I set it to 5600 Kelvin, and with the Nanlux projection mount adapter and 36 degree lens, I measured 120 foot candles at 20 feet. That is the same output as the 1200D Spotlight Max and 36 degree lens. Uh, this was the biggest surprise to me since we're comparing a 900 watt full spectrum light to a 1200 watt daylight only head. Uh, plus my lens was super dusty and not optimized, but this is what you get off the rental house shelf. I definitely expected the 1200D Spotlight Max to be way ahead of the 900C, but this was a pretty nice surprise. Plus, as a perk for the Nanlux, you can rotate the gobos and blades like any ETC Leco. The big downside to the setup is that it's not nearly as sharp. You can keep your gobo and cuts sharp at the same time, but there's some elation going on, and you just cannot beat the sharpness of the Spotlight Max. On that note though, I have used this both on set as a bounce and as a background slash, and I've never had any issues or complaints from my DP about its sharpness. I feel like it's mostly usable for out of focus patterns, but if you have to be razor sharp, this might not work for you. So that's it for the LED technology that we tested, but I wanted to throw some old classics into the mix just so we could have something familiar to compare them to. We took a tungsten Leco and measured that at 45 foot candles. It's basically on par or just under the 600X that we looked at earlier. Now for the elephant in the room, we busted out the HMI, the workhorse Joe Leco, and after about five minutes of building and waiting for the light to warm up, the results were almost comical. The beam was completely uneven by comparison of every other light we looked at, and the beam was so uneven that we got very different readings just depending on where we held the meter. It was bright though. We got a range of 300 to 340 foot candles out of the 36 degree Joe Leco which is significantly brighter than any other light we tested. So there's a lot of information to unpack here, and quite honestly, I'm not sure what to do with all of it just yet. Every setup has its own pros and cons, and I'm more than happy to share my results with you all so you can decide which setup is best for you and your needs on set. For me, the jury's still out, but I'm very interested to keep working with the 900C given its output and flexibility. Thank you so much for watching, and I wanna give a shout out to Hungry Animal Lighting for 
arranging this and providing all the aperture gear and thanks to Gearhead Grip for providing us with the space and time to do the testing. Also, thanks to Chris and Gabe who came out for show and tell and lend us a hand with the testing. If you found this useful, please subscribe and click the thumbs up button below and I will see you on the next one.